Hi, Rich Karuba for BowlingBall.com. Recently, we did another editorial article and I drafted it, and now I want to do an associated video. It talks about the bowling great Don Carter. At the time I'm shooting this video, Don has passed fairly recently. He passed on the night of January 5th, 2012. Don Carter is and was and is uh, a bowling legend, one of the true original superstars of our sport. And Don's image, his, his appearance on television all through the 1950s and 60s, uh, and his being part of that famed Budweiser beer team uh, from St. Louis, along with Tip Weber and a number of other uh, popular pros at the time, helped put bowling on the map nationally and internationally. And if anyone influenced the sport around the world to get it popular and help contribute to the bowling boom in the 1960s, it was Don Carter. In fact, there's a lot of people who benefited, myself included, by having good jobs in the bowling industry for a very long time because the bowling industry boomed in the 1960s and held that way for a number of decades. And a lot of bowling centers went up, a lot of different organizations and the infrastructure of the bowling industry developed, and people had jobs, maintained livelihoods, and raised families. Don Carter was a big part of that development because of his image and the way he worked and what he meant to the sport back in those years. Now on a personal basis, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Mr. Carter. Uh, just a couple of quick things. Uh, and if you read the associated article, it'll touch on it. But I think what was noticeable for me and we all, anyone who knew Don personally, and uh, it, it, because he was an older man at the time of his passing, 85, a lot of you may not have ever had the chance to meet him. Maybe you've read about him or heard about him. But my personal best memory of, of Mr. Carter was in 1975, around March, my father had passed away about a month ago, and I was missing the heart of the winter tour season on the Pro Bowlers Tour. I got a phone call while I was home tending to family matters, and it was Don Carter sitting in the founder of the PBA's office, Eddie Elias. And Don invited me to join his pro Don Carter Glove staff of champions, the staff that he and a couple of associates had built uh, to endorse his bowling glove product at that time. And he invited me to join, and it was, uh, in those years, it was, uh, it was an honor to be with the Don Carter Glove staff, I'll say that. And I, I, I respectfully and proudly accepted, even though I knew in my heart Don was offering me and my family, because of the money that came with this uh, contract endorsement every month would help my family. So in a sense, Don was being very charitable. And I knew it, but it was the way he approached me and the way he spoke to me and treated me like a professional that to this day I will never forget. At a time that I was down and out, Don Carter came through. And he did so with dignity and with pride. And it's something that I'll never forget. And I can assure you, if you love bowling today and you're part of the bowling world, then you're part of the history that led all the way back to Mr. Carter and all the good he did for all of us. Okay? Number two, Don and his lovely wife Paula, who Paula Sperber Carter, who actually won a U.S. Open championship herself in her days when she was a pro bowler, uh, when they hosted their tournament in Miami for years, it was one of the tournaments you had to attend. The Dick Weber's tournament, Don Carter's tournament, you had to go if you were a Turing pro. You missed those tournaments, you didn't show respect to the greatest people that made it possible for you to earn a living in bowling. So therefore, uh, I, I would go to the tournament in Miami every year, and Don and Paula would sit in a little box constructed specially behind a given pair of lanes in the center part of the bowling center so they could watch the pros cascade by as they change pairs of lanes uh, bowling each game. And they would watch... And everybody religiously, all the pros would stop by and shake Don's hand and say and give acknowledgement to, to Paula as well and have a quick word with them to respect the host that made the tournament possible and to respect the legend himself. And you had to see it and watch the greatest bowlers, the Earl Anthony's, the Mark Ross, the Marshall Holmans, and everybody, how humbled they were when they stopped by to see Don. I, of course, was one of those who was very humbled every time I had a chance to speak with Don. A gracious host, a wonderful person, very sincere, soft-spoken, quiet, but honest and truthful. I can't say better words about anybody. I miss him. 
And that was one of my great memories of Don Carter, and it was the measure of respect the pros showed him that Don richly deserved. So long live the memory of the great Don Carter. Thank you.